After being diagnosed with cancer, our next guest went on a journey to discover what he could do to improve his odds of survival and learn everything that he could about optimal health. Joining us is documentary filmmaker Greg Kiger. Welcome, Greg. Yes, sir. Nice to be here with you. So documentary filmmaker before the diagnosis sure. and continuing on today, and we're going to talk about how you've woven that in. Um, to your current life, and you had a really big change a couple years ago, right? That was a considerable change. Really big change that nobody wants to go through, but a lot of people do. Right, right. Got a call one day, and they said, Mr. Kiger, you've got cancer. It's serious. Drop everything and change your focus in life. So I did. Okay, so, and it was more than serious. <clears throat> it, it, was, mm. it was really potentially the end of your life you were facing at that point. Right, yeah. Um, about a year ago, I was in a room with 10 other patients, and the doctor told me that six of them wouldn't, wouldn't, be, wouldn't walk out of there very soon. So um, that is a, uh, a wake-up call that gets your attention right away. And um, I said, if I'm lucky enough to get out of here, I'm going to do something good with the rest of my life. Yeah, okay. So you're doing something good now by educating others. Right. And not just people who have cancer. You're, you're talking to everyone because we all have something to learn from your experience. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, yeah, I, I hope to uh, offer that. Um, it's been interesting. When you're a documentary filmmaker, you get access to people. So as soon as I learned about the diagnosis, I went off talking to farmers and scientists and researchers and medical professionals and trying to understand all about what average normal people can do in their lives to maintain good health and, and help out, uh, help their own health to be good. Let the doctors do what they do well, but mm. uh, take good care of themselves. And yeah. So when people receive this type of diagnosis that you received, oftentimes they go through the five stages of grief or in whatever, whatever that means to them. Mm -hmm. Did you have that kind of moment where you first had to grapple with the truth and then you were set into action? Or did you immediately jump into, I've got to make some changes? It, um, it, it took about 10 minutes for me. I, I dove right in and said, uh, I'm obviously not a doctor. I'm obviously not going to invent something new that's going to that's gonna help me in that way. I better learn all about optimal health and wellness. Mm. And uh, at the time, I, I thought it would be really hard. I thought there was a lot of conflicting information. There wasn't a consensus, et cetera. I was surprised by a lot of what I found. Okay. So prior to the diagnosis, what was your lifestyle like? Uh, you know, busy, like everyone is, uh, focused on career, like everyone is. And I think I was reasonably smug, which, you know, a lot of us are about our diet. I'm eating healthy. Uh, and in hindsight, I really wasn't eating all that healthy. So well, let's talk about that. Right. Um, so what did eating healthy mean to the pre-cancer Greg? Um, I, you know, I, I don't think I could spell the word vegetables, uh, okay. so that was, that was an issue. Uh, you know, vegetables are so awesome in that they're low in calories but high in nutrition. Mm -hmm. I didn't eat very many vegetables. I ate a lot of processed foods, a lot of processed carbohydrates, but I was riding my bike a lot and thought I could get away with it. And uh, So, yeah, I was, I was smug, but I was on that standard American diet, and that's been proven to cause problems. Was fast food a part of your diet? Not really. Okay. Um, I was fast on the bike and I ate a lot of food, but that was about, <laughs> that was about the extent <laughs> that of it. That was your but, fast food. Right. Okay, so you weren't the typical American in that respect. And, sure. and so to most people, you probably did have a fairly healthy um, nutritional outlook right. or, or um, pattern, I should say. Um, okay, so what about your weight? Was it average? It really was. Uh, it was a little heavy, but, um, uh, you know, it's... Um, in America, there's very few groups of people you can make fun of, except for people who are overweight and obese, which is unfortunate, uh, but it's not necessarily the sole ha hallmark of, of uh, health issues, and I'm a good example of that. I was, I was, like I said, I was pretty smug and thought, oh, yeah, we're nailing this, and um, uh, wasn't, wasn't doing as well as I could have, even though I wasn't carrying a lot of extra pounds. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the cancer that you were diagnosed with was? Uh, melanoma. Okay, mm -hmm. and then it, and it invaded your body in different ways. So it, it did. It, be, it quickly it became, did. Uh, it went from, from the skin to other parts right. of the Right, it's super scary. I mean, of mm -hmm. all the, if you look at diabetes or heart disease or whatever, um, they're all scary, And uh, but, but cancer is a real wake-up call. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about what some of the things that you learned immediately and put into action. So stay with us at STL Live. We'll have more with Greg uh, Kiger and what to eat, his documentary, and we'll talk about that after this break.